The Linux kernel is the heart of the Linux operating system. It is a fundamental piece of software. Many people use it without even knowing. It powers servers that run the internet. It is inside Android smartphones we use daily. Desktops and countless embedded devices also rely on it. Its open source nature means anyone can view its code. This transparency is a strength, fostering collaboration and scrutiny worldwide. The kernel's design allows for remarkable flexibility and efficiency. Kernel security is not just an option, it is a necessity. Think of the kernel as the central manager. It controls all hardware resources. It manages how software interacts with that hardware. If this central manager has a weakness, the entire system is at risk. A compromised kernel means a compromised device. Therefore, protecting the kernel is paramount for overall system integrity. The stability and security of millions of systems depend directly on the kernel's robustness. The development of the Linux kernel is a massive, ongoing community effort. Thousands of developers from around the globe contribute code. They fix bugs and add new features constantly. This collaborative model allows for rapid innovation. It also means many eyes are looking for potential problems. However, the kernel is incredibly complex. It contains millions of lines of code. This complexity makes it a challenging target for security assurance and an attractive one for those seeking to exploit it. Despite the dedication and skill of countless developers, vulnerabilities can appear. No software of this scale is ever perfect. New code can introduce new bugs. Old code might hide subtle flaws for years. The goal is not to pretend vulnerabilities don't exist. The real goal is to find them quickly and then to fix them effectively and transparently. The open development process is key to this rapid response cycle, ensuring issues are addressed. Recently, several significant vulnerabilities have come to light. One such issue is CVE 2024-53104. This is an out-of-bounds write weakness. It resides in the USB video class UVC driver. This flaw has been around since kernel version 2.6.26. It allows an attacker with physical access to escalate privileges. The US Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency or CISA even mandated federal agencies to patch this. The deadline was February 26, 2025, showing its seriousness. Google also patched this for Android users in February 2025. Google's April 2025 Android security update addressed two more zero-day vulnerabilities. These were also found in the Linux kernel's USB subcomponent. Both CVE 2024-50-3150 and CVE 2024-53197 received CVSS scores of 7.8. CVE 2024-53150 is an out-of-bounds read. This can lead to sensitive data exposure without any user interaction. CVE 2024-53197 is a privilege escalation bug. It can cause memory corruption or allow an attacker to gain higher privileges. These were fixed in the mainline kernel in December 2024. The exploitation of these vulnerabilities is not just theoretical. Reports from Amnesty International suggest that these flaws, or similar ones like CVE 2024-50302, were potentially used. An Israeli digital forensics firm, Celebrite, reportedly leveraged them. They allegedly used these to access a Serbian activist's phone in December 2024. Google confirmed limited targeted exploitation of both CVE 2024-53150 and CVE 2024-53197. This indicates sophisticated actors are actively using these kernel weaknesses for specific objectives, including forensic data extraction. Another notable issue is CVE 2024-36904. This is a use-after-free vulnerability. It affects the TCP subsystem of the Linux kernel. Specifically, the flaw lies in the function. Such a vulnerability can be very dangerous. It can allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code. It could also lead to denial-of-service attacks, crashing the system. A proof-of-concept exploit, named CVE 2024-36904 Trigger, was publicly released in March 2025, demonstrating its practicality. This vulnerability was identified using tools like Kassan. Privilege escalation vulnerabilities like CVE 2024-53104 and CVE 2024-53197 are particularly dangerous. When an attacker escalates privileges, they gain more control. They can bypass normal security restrictions. 
This means they might install malware, they could steal highly sensitive data, or they might completely take over the system. Even if CV 2024-53104 requires physical access, it is still a major concern for many devices. Once higher privileges are gained, the attacker essentially owns the device. Data exposure, as seen with CV 2024-53150, is another severe consequence. An out-of-bounds read flaw allows an attacker to read memory. This memory may contain private information. It could be your personal messages or login credentials, it might be confidential business documents. The fact that CVE 2024-53150 requires no user interaction makes it worse. Users might be completely unaware that their data is being stolen. This silent theft is a significant threat to privacy and security. Vulnerabilities like CVE 2024-36904 can lead to denial of service or DOS or arbitrary code execution. A DOS attack makes a system unusable, it floods the system with requests or crashes critical services, this can disrupt businesses and critical infrastructure, arbitrary code execution is even more alarming, it means an attacker can run their own software on your machine, this gives them full control to do whatever they want, they can install backdoors join the system to a botnet or destroy data. The real world examples show these are not just abstract threats, the reported use by forensic firms like Celebrite is a clear indicator. They are exploiting kernel flaws to extract data from phones. Many of these phones run Android which uses the Linux kernel. Targeted attacks confirmed by CISA and Google against specific individuals or organizations also occur. This means sophisticated groups are actively hunting for and using these vulnerabilities. The impact can range from individual privacy violations to broader security compromises. The most critical mitigation strategy is applying patches promptly. We work hard in the kernel community to fix bugs quickly. Once a vulnerability is identified and a patch is developed, it needs to be deployed. CISA's Binding Operational Directive 2201 from November 2021 is a good example. It mandates US federal agencies to fix known exploited vulnerabilities. This highlights the urgency. Users and administrators must install security updates as soon as they become available from their distribution or vendor. Operating system vendors and device manufacturers play a crucial role. They take the mainline kernel patches and integrate them. They then distribute these updates to end users. For example, Google patched Android for the USB vulnerabilities. Red Hat provided fixes for CVE 2024-36904 in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. However, there can be a lag. The time between a kernel fix and its availability in a specific product can create a window of risk. This supply chain for patches needs to be efficient. Proactive security measures during development are also vital. We use tools like the Kernel Address Sanitizer or CASAN. CASAN helps detect memory corruption bugs, such as use after free issues, early. Secure coding practices are constantly emphasized. Furthermore, guidance from cybersecurity agencies like CISA and the Five Eyes is important. Their call for better forensic visibility in network edge devices helps in detecting and investigating breaches, strengthening overall defense. These efforts aim to prevent vulnerabilities from appearing in the first place. Ultimately, maintaining Linux kernel security is an ongoing battle. It requires continuous vigilance. The kernel is always evolving with new code added daily. This means new potential weaknesses can emerge. The open source community is essential for this. Its members constantly scrutinize, test and improve the code. Users must also play their part, keep systems updated, follow security best practices. The threat landscape is not static, it changes constantly. Our commitment to security must be just as dynamic and persistent.